Then there's the Shiites. The Shiites are the ones that you hear in the news all the time, the, the very fanatical, um, uh, your terrorists are part of the Shiites. The Shiites are very militant. And in the places of where Muslims are in control, the Shiites usually rule. And they will do anything to establish that rule and put anybody down. Now, it does, they do tend to give the whole thing of Islam a bad name because a lot, 80% of the Muslims say, hey, we're not Shiites. You know, we're not involved in that. And you need to understand that with the stuff that's going on. But nevertheless, um, actually in my, my notes I say 18% are Shiites, so it must be uh, 82% that are the uh, Sunnis. And the connection there with the Shiites is that they consider Ali... And this is very important for, to establish this connection. They establish, uh, or Ali is the husband of Fatima, and, and that, that was, this, they say, is the successor of Muhammad. Well, who's Fatima? Fatima is very important. He was the favored, beloved daughter of Muhammad. They also pronounce her name Fatima. Okay, that's the radical fundamentalist group. Now, Fatima is very important if you know anything about Catholicism, and we'll, we'll get into that as well. But now I'm going to tell you some very important facts, and I know we've been quick, but I've got to cover this all in one section so you get it all connected. You're going to have to ro- go back through this tape. Here's the facts of the Muslim faith. All of Islam is awaiting the final prophet, not just, not just the, uh, the uh, radical group, all of them are awaiting the final prophet. Who is the final prophet? He is called the Mahadi. Okay? And that means the expected one. They have a Messiah who they're waiting for. Now, in the Shiite Islam, there's called the Twelver Doctrine, and that's been taught for centuries. And the Twelver Doctrine consists of that there was twelve, what they called imams. Now, imam is like a holy wise man. Now, all of them died like, some, like a martyr, but the last one disappeared in Samara, Iraq, 60 miles north of Baghdad in 873 or 874 A.D. And today he's still hiding. He's still alive and he's still hiding according to their theology. This is the, the Shiite theology, this radical Muslim group. He's the 12th Imam and he is the Messiah as far as they're concerned. They say that he shall return. If you ask them, well, where is he today? They will tell you he is hiding. Where is he hiding? And they tell you, well, he left in a rat and he's hiding in the desert. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 26, he says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Just a point. Okay, here are Muslim prophecies concerning this coming of the final Mahdi, or Messiah, if you will. And these are, just like we believe in last day prophecies, they have prophecies to tell you some very important facts. And I know we've been quick, but I've got to cover this all in one section so you get it all connected. You're going to have to go back through this tape. Here's the facts of the Muslim faith. All of Islam is awaiting the final prophet, not just, not just the, uh, the uh, radical group. All of them are awaiting the final prophet. Who is the final prophet? He is called the Mahdi. Okay? And that means the expected one. They have a Messiah who they're waiting for. Now, in the Shiite uh, Islam... There's called the Twelver Doctrine, and that's been taught for centuries. And the Twelver Doctrine consists of that there was twelve what they called imams. Now, imam is like a holy wise man. Now, all of them died like, some, like a martyr, but the last one disappeared in Samara, Iraq, 60 miles north of Baghdad in 873 or 874 A.D., and... Today, he's still hiding. He's still alive and he's still hiding according to their theology. This is the, the Shiite theology, this radical Muslim group. He's the 12th Imam and he is the Messiah as far as they're concerned. They say that he shall return. 
If you ask them, well, where is he today? They will tell you he is hiding. Where is he hiding? And they tell you, well, he left in a rat and he's hiding in the desert. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 26, He says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, He is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, He is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Just a point. Okay, here are Muslim prophecies concerning this coming of the final Mahdi, or Messiah, if you will. And these are, just like we believe in last day prophecies, they have prophecies regarding the coming of their Messiah. Watch these. Now, this is not based on Bible prophecy. In fact, most of these guys don't know anything about the book of Revelation. They don't accept the book of Revelation. Number one, he will suddenly appear just before the end of the world during a time of great difficulty. We have some difficulty going on today, don't we? Number two, he will convert the world to the Islamic faith. His name will be Muhammad and a direct descendant of Fatima. Well, if he's a direct descendant of Fatima, he had to, he must come through the Shiites. His father's name will be Abdullah. A Syrian army will attack him, but they will be destroyed in the desert. Iraq and Syria will afterwards unite and pledge their allegiance to him. He will take Turkey by force. He will unite all of Islam. His conquest will be to spread Islam worldwide, one religion. He will conquer Spain. He will have great financial wealth, including great gold and silver for his faithful followers. Incidentally, the Muslims have their own currency that they've established for Muslim countries and the coins are gold and silver. The Muslims are buying up all the gold and silver that they can get their hands on. They're the great buyers of the gold and the silver. Now here's something very interesting as well. This, what they say, Al-Mahadi, or the Mahadi, will arise from the east and come riding on a white horse and be a great military leader. Well, it's very interesting. This picture here is, by, is the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Many people have taught us down through the years in the Christian circles that the first white horse represents the coming of the Antichrist. It's very interesting, I think, that the Mahdi will come out of the desert riding on a white horse. That will be how they will recognize him, somewhere out of Iraq. Those who do not obey him shall be beaten and beheaded. He will rule for a period of seven years. Now this is all Islam prophecy. Esau, which is the way they pronounce Jesus, will come after him descending into Damascus. Jesus will call upon all the world to break the cross, which is Christianity, and kill the swine, which is the Jews. In other words, this prophet who claims to be Jesus, who follows after the Mahdi, will claim that, that there is no crucifixion. See, the Muslims, they believe Mary was a, was a virgin when she conceived, that Mary gave birth as a virgin, that Jesus was a great prophet of God, and that Jesus ascended into heaven, but they deny the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. When he got to heaven, God told Jesus, according to their theology, why did you tell people that you were my son? You will have to return to the earth and tell the world that you were not my son, that God has no son. This prophet, according to Islam faith, that follows the Islam Messiah, who will claim to be Jesus, will do great miracles to prove who he is and deny the crucifixion, and that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus, they say, will call upon all the world to break the cross and kill the swine. Jesus will command to slay Al-Dajjal, who is the false prophet in, is er, in Israel. Well, who are we expecting to come? Elijah. Who will rebuild the temple? Elijah. What will the, Maha what will the Islamic or Muslims say? This is a false prophet. What will the Antichrist do? 
kill the false or to kill the, the, the witness. From Revelation chapter 11. Another interesting one here is an animal will come forth speaking and calling the people back to Islam. That may have something to do with the image of the beast speaking and it's, we can't get into it tonight. Constantinople, Turkey, will fall followed by Rome. Rome will also fall according to their prophecy. The Mahdi will have secret knowledge of things. Now, Interesting, I know you can't remember all of those things that I just said, but now I'm going to give you some scriptures. What does the Bible say about the Antichrist? Daniel 8, 9, he will come from the east. Revelation 6, 2, he will come riding upon a white horse. Daniel 9, 27, he will come for seven years. Revelation 20, verse 4, those who disobey will be beaten and beheaded. Revelation chapter 17 and 18 and Daniel 11, Turkey and Rome will fall to him. Revelation chapter 13, an animal will speak, if that's the image. Revelation chapter 13, a lamb-like prophet will follow after him. Well, who's the Lamb of God? Jesus. Not the Lamb of God will follow him. A prophet like a lamb will follow him. Daniel 8.23, the Mahdi will know deep secrets. Well, so Daniel 8.23 says the Antichrist will know deep secrets. Daniel 11.38 and verse 43 says gold and silver will be given to his faithful followers. Twenty-two Islamic countries are now using this new gold and silver dinar, which they've produced. The, the uh, thing about that is that they want to establish their own monetary system, economic system. And the neat thing about it is, if you are Islam, they cannot charge you interest. So you're going to go out and buy a home or something like that? They can't charge you any usury if you're Muslim. Wouldn't it be attractive to become Muslim in those days? Especially when they're the ones having the gold and silver, if this if we had an economic collapse based upon our papers, just our money's just paper. They've got the gold and the silver. Antichrist will deny the deity of Christ, which we've shown, the relationship between the Father and the Son. Islam claims Jesus is a prophet, but God has no son. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, the first beast rises up, is the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, the second beast that rises up, is the false prophet. Now, let me show you this. This comes right out, this will come right out of the Quran here. Before, we, before I get into that, let me tell you a couple more facts. That uh, this Christ that comes, this Islamic Christ, this false Christ who claims to be Jesus, he will have no scars on his hands, feet, or side. Why? Because they don't believe he was crucified. He'll do miracles. He'll claim to be Christ. He'll even probably resurrect the dead because don't we read that Antichrist will receive a mortal wound and yet come back to life? Well, how's he going to come back to life? Could be this false Jesus will raise him up from the dead. But this Jesus will have no scars on his hands, feet, or side. He will represent Christianity without a cross. He will lead men to Islam, not to the Bible. And he will deny that Jesus is the Son of God and we put together what John said about the Antichrist. Now watch this. Three scriptures that come right out of the Koran here. Or I shouldn't call them scriptures. Um, they're called surahs. Listen to this. 